Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're actually going to look at horizontally layered rocks under your grade 11 geomorphology. All right, we're going to look at the features, uh, the characteristics of this rock, uh, horizontally layered rocks. All right, so we're going to cover various aspects. We're going to look at hilly landscapes, uh, we're going to look at the Karoo landscapes, etc. So let's get going. Okay. Now, what we're going to cover here is we're going to identify, and I will get my highlighter first. We're going to identify landforms under horizontally laid rocks. We're going to look at the characteristics and processes associated with the development. This is the main focus of this section. Okay. Now, the first thing, let's look at the concept of horizontally layered rocks and their formation. Okay. So, when horizontally sed uh, sedimentary rocks are uplifted without changing its horizontal position. Can you see they've been uplifted here? Yeah, they've been uplifted. And the horizontal position stays. Then they are horizontally layered rocks. All right. Also, we find that one of the layers can happen when lava flows on the surface cools and forms a layer in terms of the horizontal structure. Okay, so when lava comes out and cools, like in this case, we could have sedimentary rocks and here's your lava that has come out and cooled, all right? It also can, as it flows over the surface, you understand? It cools and forms a horizontally layered rock. So we can actually look at this and say horizontally layered rocks can have igneous and sedimentary rocks. Okay? Then also we looked at in grade 10, you looked at the sill, which is a horizontal feature, internal a magma cools and then forms a horizontal feature known as a cell. And what happens when this is exposed to the surface? It also forms a horizontal layer. So <clears throat> rocks that are horizontally layered, that's what we're discussing in this little piece of information. Okay, let's go on. Now let's look at these different hilly landscapes that we're going to look at, all right? So we're going to look at hilly landscapes in a humid area, and we're going to look at hilly landscapes in a dry area, all right? So we look at the humid areas first. Of course, we know that in a humid areas, there's a large amount of rainfall, generally speaking, and the water will result in erosion. One of the prominent movements in these areas is sheet wash, a process in which a thin mobile sheet of water, all right, flows over the surface of a hill slope and will take place. Okay, so what happens is it flows as a sheet down here. You know, like covering, I always use the example of taking a sheet and covering a, a bed, just letting it just go over a bit. So it flows at the mobile column. You understand mobile means it's moving and it flows over. All right, so because we have this water flowing over, you understand, it doesn't create as much of a rugged terrain. So therefore, due to this water, it's more smooth and rounded hills 
will form okay on this hilly landscape and you can see here it's clearly more smooth and rounded more smooth and rounded as we go through this whole area so this is in a humid area of a hilly landscape all right let's then go to a dry area all right here yeah, of course less rainfall less water erosion but you must remember to come to this there was water erosion earlier and it brought down the landscape okay so it reached this point so what has actually happened here it resulted in ruggy hilly landscapes you understand uh, where the resistant rocks stick out the softer rocks have been eroded all right and because of lack of water water erosion there's very little rounding although remember water erosion was there in the initial processes okay when the landscape originated the slopes are uneven and steep can you see uneven slopes that's occurring here okay now this also can be referred to as the bad lands all right where dry terrain where softer sedimentary rocks and clay rich soils have been extensively eroded by wind and water okay so the rocks have been eroded the softer ones of course the resistant rocks less erosion and they stick out okay so these slopes are steep slopes with minimal vegetation not much vegetation as can be seen here okay as can be seen here so it's more in the dry areas that this happens all right so that's your bad lands okay then we look at now features that will form in a horizontal layered landscape okay and one of the features that will form is a basaltic plateau now when we talk basaltic we're talking igneous as you would have done when you did rock types igneous sedimentary etc so you will be talking about this type of rock so we know a plateau is a flat surface all right a flat surface that forms let's see how this happens all right so this represents your magma in this area okay your magma coming through within the surface of the earth and as it comes through of course when it comes out it's known as your lava all right and now visualize as it coming through all right cracks in the crust all right it starts to spread out and flow and as it flows it cools and forms a flat surface of basaltic material a flat surface so this igneous rocks then uh, form but it forms flat, creating a plateau, which describes a large flat surface. Okay, so it's involved with volcanic activity. Okay, now let's look at the explanation. And remember again, this is associated with horizontal layered rocks. All right, it occurs when one or a succession of high temperatures basaltic lava flows from fissures and these are known as fissures little gaps in the crust through which this magma flows through and comes out as lava all right eruptions okay through that which accumulate on the surface cools to form a plateau can you see it's accumulating it's flowing off and it accumulates and there your flat 
plateau forms. So that is basaltic lava, flat surface creating a basaltic plateau. All right, the name has relevance to the explanation. Okay, let's go on. A good example, this is part of the Drakensberg. Can you see here how the lava has cooled the basaltic lava and it has formed this flat surface known as a basaltic plateau. It's a beautiful sight. Can you see it? Beautiful sight. I am looking at that as brilliant. You understand? Flat surface with basaltic lava that has cooled. Okay. Let's look now at canyon landscapes. Okay. Canyon landscapes. Now, a canyon is also a beautiful site. I'll show you pictures of that just now. Let's look at the formation of the canyon landscape. Okay. Now let's look at this. This firstly is your plateau. All right. It was covered right through down here. Okay. Your plateau. Let's start. Now, what happens is created, a canyon landscape is created when river causes erosion over a long period of time. So what happens? A plateau or tableland level is eroded. So here we have it, this flat surface. Now what's happening? The river starts to erode through this thing. It's eroding. And as it's eroding over time, it starts cutting into this tabletop level or land level. You understand a flat surface, a plateau is your best example. It starts cutting in. And as it cuts in, all right, rugged cliffs form. Because the harder strata are resistant to erosion and weathering and remain exposed on the valley walls. So the softer rock gets eroded. Of course, the more resistant rock gets eroded also, but to a far, far less degree. Okay, so they remain on the valley walls because this is now a river flowing and cutting through this flat surface okay and therefore you will find that the resistant rocks here can you see it's sort of rugged terrain a picture just now will be more clearer can you see it's rugged all the resistant rocks remain on the valley walls there's your valley down here this is a canyon formation a simple explanation for it this will suffice for you okay so let's look further. Beautiful. All right. Can you see? It's crevasse cut through. Can you see the rugged terrain here of the resistant rock? Rugged terrain of the resistant rock. The reverse cut right through. This is your canyon. Beautiful feature. All right. I've got another picture for you here. Can you see the rugged terrain? There's your river valley coming through and the sides have rugged terrain of resistant rock. Beautiful, the Grand Canyon itself. Brilliant feature. All right, one day when you're going to America, make sure you go to the Grand Canyon. I can't. Please take some pictures for me. I don't have the money. Okay. Now, we looked at the hill landscape we looked at the uh, canyon landscape. Now we're going to look at the Karoo landscape and associated landforms. Remember, this is a process that goes on and it cuts and cuts and cuts. And the Karoo landscape is an old landscape as there's further and further erosion occurring. Okay, now this is a nice little sketch. We find this various features. I will explain it in more detail. 
all right? So a MISA, we're going to look at a flat-topped, isolated hill. Uh, the plateau itself, can you see it? Okay, so it's not all these things are related because you have the plateau and then it gets eroded. You have the canyon and then it undergoes further erosion. And then you have this Karoo landscape, which is the oldest landscape. All right, so don't see them <coughs> as different. Okay, they're all related. They are different in characteristics and landforms, but there's a relationship as you go through it. Please note that, learners. All right, there's a relationship. So we're looking at the plateau. We look at a butte. We look at a pointed butte. We'll even look at um, a hill or right, at a conical hill. Various features will form here. Okay. Now, once we look at this, the formation, the canyon has existed, but now due to erosion, it gets widened. Remember, erosion is happening here. Edward, all right? Backward, all right? Erosion is happening. As it's eroding this, we're going to talk more about those concepts later. All right, when we talk about scarp retreat, as the steep areas, when the water flows over it, etc., it gets eroded. And as it gets eroded, it moves backwards as if it's retreating. But I will deal with that concept in more detail. So if it's actually eroding here and eroding there, obviously it's going to get wider here. The canyon is going to become wider and wider. All right. And sometimes you may find in the end, you're not going to have uh, much of this rugged or hilly area. You're going to have most of it being eroded with resistant rocks sticking out in different positions, forming the different landscapes. So in this case, the plateau remains the same height. Can you see the height here? The height there? It does not change height. All we're having is more erosion happening here because this area on the top has cap rock. Now, what is cap rock? It's a layer of resistant rock that exists there. It's hard. You understand on the top. So it's hard to get eroded. Okay. So because of this cap rock, and you can see it on the top here, all right, erosion happens in between, but the level or the height of this remains the same. So a point to note here is that Anything that has the cap rock will have the same height as the plateau. Okay? Remember that again. Anything that has the cap rock will have the same height as the plateau. Any landform. Okay? So let's look here. We will have various landforms, as I told you. The Mesa, the Butte, the Pointed Butte, the Conical Hills. All these things will form on this Karoo landscape. Okay, so let's start looking at these different features. And let me just refresh myself. Okay. Now, let's look at the MISA first. How would we identify this and its process of formation? Okay, now, it's an isolated flat topped hill with steep sides found in the landscapes with horizontal strata. So we know it's related to horizontal strata, but it's a flat topped landform with steep sides. All right, a good description of it. Okay, now there's something else we can look at here. Okay, and that is clearly shown that the width is greater than the height. Look at the height here, can you see the height? But look at the width, it is greater than the height. And it's easier to differentiate. Just now, we will deal with something known as a butte, all right? 
and suddenly there you would see that there's a slight difference all right in regards to that okay so uh, and this width and height thing you will get clearly done okay so the width is greater than the height all right the width is greater than the height mesas are also created through the process of erosion all right let's explain that now remember the mesa was once part of a flat elevated land known as the plateau so the plateau existed let's create something with my highlighter all right and what has happened here is through erosion happening all right this piece was separated from the plateau okay piece was separated now let's go back to the first diagram can you see this is a mesa it was part of this plateau but as erosion happened and it's more edward backward uh, retreat of the slopes etc it started eroding and what has happened here learners is that this piece now has become an isolated piece but originally it was part of the plateau and you can see clearly here its height is less than its width okay the height is less than its width all right now let's get back to that okay misas are created as streams cut through the plateau can you see how it cut through the plateau there all right and therefore it got separated but it is the same height as the plateau because at the top of it it has the cap rock and i'm sorry i'm going back all the time can you see the cap rock of the plateau can you see that it has the cap rock there at the mesa so both it still maintains the height of the plateau okay it maintains the height of the plateau all right that's a general description of your mesa okay let's go a little again down here now i put this in this butte actually is not a real reflection of that okay but sometimes we get these sketches i'm going to explain that to you i'm going to say that the butte is more like this and i'm going to explain to you why i put the other sketch in so don't you really see if some of these textbooks do have those sketches i'm not going to name them it's not my job to do that so don't get confused okay but uh, let me clarify that okay buttes are also tall flat top steep sided towers of rock as i showed you down here all right flat topped steep sided it has the cap rock so already you can see it's going to be the same level as the mesa and the plateau because that resistant rock is there okay also you'll notice the height is greater than the width the opposite now yeah the width was greater than the height yeah the height is greater than the width it's smaller feature all right so let's go through this now the height is greater than the width with the beaut as i showed you so it's easier to identify buttes also are created through the process of erosion when it's edward backward slope retreat or scarp retreat and it gets smaller as it cuts down same process as the mesa again the mesa was once part of a flat and i'm gonna move my little face here flat area known as the mesa or plateau all right so i'm sorry that each time i'm going back 
So here we have it. It could have been part of the Misa. And as the Misa got eroded, its width went smaller and therefore the height was greater than the width. It can also be cut off from the plateau itself and form the butte on its own. Okay. Now, buttes again are created and cut through a Misa or a plateau. Erosion occurs, all right? Due to the cap rock, it has the same height, all right, as a Misa or a plateau. Now, let's go to this last one here, a conical hill, all right? Now, let's go and look at our little sketch. You'll notice the conical hill is a bit smaller. It may have little uh, cap rock or no cap rock, all right? Generally, we say no cap rock, all right? So, let's look at this. The cap rock here, as a result of the action of an entrenched river that has deeply cut into the plateau. So, when the river cuts into the plateau deep, okay, a conical hill forms. It generally has no cap rock. Okay, so it gets eroded and it does not have the height of the Mesa or the Butte or the Plateau because of the lack of cap rock. Okay. Now, let's look at it because these features can be tested in map work. So we need to look at the features itself, identify uh, differences in terms of how we look at it on a map, etc. So we have more clarification. Now I put in two sketches here. This is the Butte and this is the Misa. Can you see the Misa? This is a picture of it. Can you see the width is greater than the height? All right. And here the Butte, the height is greater than the width. Now, how will it look on a contour map? I'm sure you guys are intelligent. You already saw it, all right? Of course, it's very steep here, all right? Because of the cap rock, okay? So when we look at this area here of the contour, we find the contour lines are relatively close. And as we move away, it becomes more gentle, all right? Same with the butte. At first, it's very steep. And then as we move away, it becomes a bit more gentle. All right. Now, there's one other thing that we could look at learners in order to look at the contour map and then realize which one can be a Mesa, which one can be a Butte. If we look at the center contour line here and look at the area between it, we find it is very broad, very wide compared to the butte where the center here the flat area is much smaller again showing us the point that the width in the mesa is greater than the height can you see the flat space on the top is much larger than the flat space regarding the butte that's how we can identify using a contour map all right it's a very important thing okay when we look at that and sometimes you find on a map it's known as some spit score or something of that sort that will be more reference to your beauty itself okay let's then look at the next thing your conical hill your cone shaped one okay you will look at the slope going down. Uh, of course, I exaggerated this. This looks like a real cone. You understand, but it's exaggerated a bit in order to make the picture bigger. All right. You can see the cone shape here. That's happening. You don't see much of that cap rock, horizontally layered cap rock on the top. Okay. And if you look at this, uh, the slope is not like this all of a sudden where you look at the top and it goes like that, and then it goes slowly again, gently. Woof, my diagram 
my using of my highlighter to draw is a bit bad. I'm not an art student, all right, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it actually goes down as a full slope here. And when you look at the contour lines, can you see it? There's no suddenly very steep down here. And then it gets gentle down there. You notice it's more or less continuous as we move down. And that's one of the ways of identifying a conical here. All right. If we go back here, you will notice here close and then it gets gentle. Close and then it gets gentle. But here, if you look at this, it's more or less evenly spaced not totally but not that steep at the beginning and then it changes you can identify that so these are features that form in a Karoo landscape okay uh, concepts of your scarp retreat all right if you look at it here can you see what's happening if water has to flow here it will erode and as the broken line show you, it's eroding. A scarp slope refers to a steep slope, all right? So uh, scarp retreat means that this is cutting in, okay? Even on a flat horizontal surface here, we're showing slight inclination. Let's take it down here where it's a horizontal. You'll come across later looking at this when we do inclined strata, but it's a nice way of showing you how scarp retreat, how the steep slope is going backwards, like backward erosion, scarp retreat, all right? We still have the steep slope here. If water flows down here, you will find it will cut in and this area would move in that way, as if this steep slope is retreating or moving backwards. All right, have you got that learners? All right, you can see it happening. And sometimes what actually happens is, as it's flowing here and flowing here, we will find it more or less parallel as it erodes, okay? And you notice it down here also learners, that is a form of parallel erosion or retreat that's happening, okay? So scarp retreat, can you see what happens here? As it goes through, look at the arrows here again. Diagram showing you this. As it flows here, it's eroding. It's retreating towards the left here. And as it's eroding here, it's retreating towards the right. Okay, as it's moving in. This feature is getting smaller. And the valley is widening can you see it widening in this area okay and that's your retreat back wasting as the concept is known it's backwards and it's also known as scarp retreat okay so what happens here all right let's look at the process further as more and more scarp retreat or back wasting happens, the feature gets smaller and smaller, all right? And then we have a flat surface here. We have two things here, a pediment and a pediplane. Let's do it piece by piece. Let's look at the pediplane first, all right? Now, it's a relatively flat rock surface that generally results from the joining, I don't know, joining and the joining, all right, I do apologize for that, of several pediments. Now, what is a pediment? I know I'm jumping. A pediment is a gently sloping erosion surface. As this erodes, can you see what's happening here? Further erosion is happening, a gently sloping surface is forming. That is your pediment. A gently sloping surface is forming. And when we have a few of these pediments, generally speaking, we have a total flat area here known as your pediplane. 
a relatively flat rock surface as erosions happen here. Very much gently sloping, very plain is your flat area here. But they form as these two keep on eroding and therefore we say as a result of joining several pediments. All right, pedi planes are usually formed in your arid region because features are being cut right down. Remember, that's where you're getting your mesa, your buttes, etc. From the, from the hilly to the canyon to the dry Karoo landscapes. Okay, have we got that learners? I know you can't reply. I'm talking most of the time. Okay, so scarp retreat then. All right, or oh, back wasting is the recession or eroding of relatively steep landscapes. Okay, parallel erosion occurs. Here, the width of the valley keeps increasing as cycle of erosion progresses, okay? And it terminates a butte, a mesa, or any elevated plateau-like surface. I just want to emphasize this again, all right? Because you're going to be using this more and more as you go through your geomorphology. So uh, once again, I want to emphasize this about scarp retreat and it affects all these things, all right? Here you have scarp retreat. Can you see it? Retreating, retreating, and therefore your periplane forms, okay? Yeah, also, if you look at it, scarp retreat, okay? Or back wasting. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah, it's happening as more of the pediments are forming. So scalp retreat plays a very, very important part in terms of forming your flat surfaces. And of course, your pieces of resistant rock stick out. Okay, is that clear, learners? All right. We now know the scalp retreat, the features that form, we know the hilly landscape, moving canyon landscape, Karoo landscape, and we also know the features that form there. We spoke about the Mesa, the Butte, uh, the uh, Conical Hill, and then we spoke about the pediment, the pediplane, and we spoke about an important process of scarp retreat and back wasting that form all these features. Now, of course, in your curriculum, you need to look at the significance, how landscapes associated with this horizontal layered data, uh, uh, not data, horizontal layered rocks and st uh, structures or landscapes, I do apologize, right, uh, is relevant or used by man, okay? So in humid areas, Hilly landscapes can be used for farming. Of course, not over hilly, but more gently sloping. That's where you can do your uh, contour plowing, etc. where they create little furrows along, or contour sort of uh, furrows along the steeper or, no, or more gentle slopes, not so steep slopes, and they actually farm there, okay? So it can be used for farming. And then in the humid dry areas, all right, uh, it can be a tourist attraction. You can have things like hiking, okay, involving the way people love to do these hikes, etc. The human areas also can be a tourist attraction where people visit these uh, beautiful terrain, etc., as shown in the pictures earlier. All right, basaltic plateaus, definitely. You saw the Drakensberg slide that I showed you, a tourist attraction. People love to go see these basaltic plateaus, etc. It has a aesthetic appeal. It's beautiful. Also, people are hiking through it. So it's used by man. Canyon landscapes are also tourist attractions. All right. The Grand Canyon. The second largest one is found in our southern Africa. The Fish River Canyon. The second largest in the world. All right. There's various activities. Hiking. River rafting. 
All right, I've been emphasizing hiking again. All right, I can, you can see I'm a hiker. I love to hike, eh? All right, so all these things come through, all right? Uh, Karoo landscapes, the, here, the flat land between the landforms can be used for farming. Example, livestock farming. I'm sure you would have heard about the Karoo lamb, which, whoa, very tasty. All right for us meat eaters okay very very tasty all right and also it can be a tourist attraction people go and visit these areas so there's various uses of course there's more uses i picked on a few all right but there's various uses for these landscapes that man can do on it okay of course we have to look at some questions because it's about application of these uh, things because in the end you're writing an exam you're writing a test okay so we have to practice and let me tell you learners take those past papers that were set by the district by your teachers go and ask them so that you use it to practice because in an exam you don't see the content you see the questions with the resources now one very important thing here learners is to analyze your resources. Analyze what's given to you, okay? What you can identify on the resource. Very, very important, all right? Because if you the examiner gives you a resource, it will give you some hints towards the questions. So always look at your resources first. Don't be question happy and run to the questions first. Analyze your resource. So let's look at this. I've adapted it from a Department of Basic Education past paper. Okay, it's adapted. I have to remove things like the numbers. I've just put in questions and I've changed a few things, not the question type. All right, so I just want to highlight that. And thank you to the DBE for their past paper, which helps us in our studies. So what do we do here? We notice, first of all, the examiner has given us letters or put in letters here. It's referring to this and it's referring to that. I haven't looked at the questions yet. Well, what is the difference? I see this has a width which is greater than the height. What did I learn? It's a MISA. All right. Then I look here, I see the height is greater than the width. That's my beaut. Then I notice the examiner has indicated something on top. Yeah. And yeah. What would that refer to? Whoa, I studied this. It's the cap rock, the layer of hard rock that's found on the top. Okay. What else has the examiner given? All right. I look, both are attached to the bottom here. Yeah. All right. I see both are more or less the same height because of the cap rock. Okay. Then I look here, I see, whoa, there's a key here. This is dolerite and the top. So I know this dolerite is actually igneous rock. Can you see how I work it out? All right. Then I look here, it gives me shale. Can you see this is, seems to be the softer rock that has been eroded, okay? Sandstone at the bottom here that has been eroded. So I'm looking at this as my softer sedimentary rocks. Can you see how much information? And please remember that the curriculum stated to you, the first thing you do is look at the rock types, igneous and sedimentary. All right, and therefore it becomes useful here, although it's your grade 10 work, but you need to revise that so you can work it out down here. Okay, so look at this. Beautiful, you found so much information. Now let's look at the questions because some of the questions you worked out already. Identify landforms P and Q. You've already got the answers. P is a MISA, all right? I uh, see the examiner accepted table mountain, which is not incorrect, but I want you to write the concept MISA unless there's specific 
reference to the Table Mountain, which is a correct concept, all right? But Misa first. You know Q is a butte because you worked out the differences. In a Misa, the width was greater than the height, as you've seen here. And Q, the height is greater than the width. Okay, can you see how you worked it out before you even looked at the questions? What evidence in the figure suggests that P and Q developed from the same landform that existed earlier? You've already worked that out. They are joined at the base with shale rock. Can you see it? They are joined at the base. Can you see it with the shale rock? Telling you it was once one feature. And of course, erosion happened here. Yeah? And therefore, it separated. Okay. They have the same rock layers on the top, the cap rock, the sandstone, the shale. They are the same height and depth. Can you see it? The same height and depth. Same height, same depth. Can you see it? All right, so therefore it was one. They both have the original cap rock on the top, as I showed you, okay? So can you see by looking at the sketch, you've got all that. Obviously, you may have to give one answer, all right? You may say, but how do I know all this? On various occasions, they may say state two factors, or there could be a mark allocation saying two times two means you must explain two, or one times two means you must explain one factor. All right, let's go on. Which rock type in the figure is more resistant to erosion? And give a reason for your answer. All right, let's look at the rock type again. We can see that it's the same height. So it's this resistant rock here, which is your dolerite. Can you see you worked your answers out? From the sketch, examiners always give you little clues that you could work through. Okay, well, let's look at it again. So it's dolerite. Yeah, the examiner accepted igneous because dolerite is a form of igneous. And it's a give a reason for your answer. Back wasting is taking place, but not downward wasting or downward erosion. Can you see it? Okay, I'll go back to the sketch. Back wasting, it's getting eroded on the sides, but not downward. The height is not decreasing. Can you see it means resistant on the top? Okay. Okay, the harder layer of rock that caps protects P and Q because it's not reducing the height, or the answer could be the ori original height remains. Both are keeping that original height of that plateau. All right. Now, there's a question here. Briefly explain how landform P changed to landform Q. We've learned this already. We knew, and I'll go back, that sometimes we learn the formation of a butte, that it's here as the Mesa gets eroded, first it was part of the plateau, and as it gets more and more eroded, it becomes a narrower feature, but now its width then changes as smaller than compared to its height. So let's look at this, all right? The cap rock or dolerite is reduced from the sides as it gets eroded. Of course, sometimes it gets eroded, the cap rock, uh, not as fast as the bottom. Sometimes the bottom gets eroded and it actually breaks off because now it's standing out, okay? P is reduced in size due to erosion of running water. So we have P here, okay? And as I showed you before, back wasting, et cetera, water running down is reducing the size. P reduces due to rock falls because what happens here, the softer rock gets eroded and we may have this situation happening, okay? All right, the softer getting eroded, and this rock now is hanging here, it falls. Okay, back wasting occurs as we discussed that. 
The slope still retains its height because it still has cap rock on the top, but it gets narrower. Parallel retreat of the slopes as water comes down. Remember I showed you, it retreats parallel and parallel. All these lines are parallel here, yeah? and that's how it retreats. I'm making a nice mess of this diagram, but just to make it more clearer to you guys. Eventually, the height of the feature is greater than the diameter. Of course, they use a more professional word here. I spoke about width, but there's a diameter being used here. It becomes smaller in the terms of the diameter, is smaller than the height. Can you see it's all the nodes? Geography is not difficult. It's not difficult. It's about taking your notes. Don't just learn it off, as some people say, in parrot fashion. Parrot fashion is learn of notes and then are half in study. It's always applying it. And all your papers will relate to that. It's not just straightforward in terms of, not that it's difficult, that just explain this, explain that. It's about applying it to resources, learners. And once you pick this technique, you will always be finding the papers easy and enjoyable.